Hello everyone, Bajo here, and today we're going to take a look at some more DCS in the AJS37 Vigan. And we had an update today, so it added a couple of new things that are quite nice to have, they've been wanting for a long time. The first one is that we have now more options than before in terms of adding custom cartridges. So, we can now add using the called the mark points that we have so you open a map with the f10 key get to the so-called f10 map and then what you do is you press here mark label you press place these down just like this wherever you want them so we're gonna put them like this just for the sake to make it easier then you press b1 b2 m3 or B4. B is a regular waypoint and M is a target waypoint in case you didn't know. So we have waypoint 1, 2, target waypoint 3 and waypoint 4 again. So then all we do is just press back into the cockpit and we won't get this information put into the knee board but what we can do is we can go to the ground crew settings and then we pick cartridge number 23. Cartridge for marks on F10 map. You can ignore this, contains 4 marks, because if I add marks and remove them, it will still say like 10 marks. So this is, as long as you have the right numbers and the right letters in there, then you should be fine. So then you just put the cartridge in. Input 9099. There. And if we take a look at these, then waypoint 1 should be to the east. And that's correct. Waypoint 2 is to the north. Waypoint 3, M3 as you can see, to the west. And waypoint B4. You can see it says B4 and we have south. Give this another look, it was kind of zoomed in. So this does it automatically for you. Now we have another thing that's extremely useful too. And that's we can now generate our own attack cartridge. So here we have a target group. We then just... We just call it attack. And the game will now recognize this. If we go to cartridge number 12. Auto-generated attack on marker position. We then get the coordinates, get all this information, like a general auto-generated attack, like this one. You can see the QFE, so we set it to 1020.8, and we're gonna fly over there and take it out. Now, I have seen some uh, problems with these cartridges, where the waypoints are kind of a bit strange. So let's just pull that out. Put the new one in. You don't have to pull the cartridge in, you can just change codes, but I like to do it for immersion. And maybe they change it in the future, then it's a good habit. And we have the same thing here. So we're gonna put the waypoints. Waypoint B1. Okay, that's not correct at all. Did it change? Maybe it didn't change. Very strange. Yeah, it does that. It's been doing that a bit. Like, waypoint 1 is, like, way off outside the map. You know, it's off the scale even there. But that's unimportant, because B2 is, like, the ingress point. B3 is the target point. M3, you can see. B4 is the exact same waypoint as B2. So I'm guessing that's some kind of, like, egress or re-engagement point. So you know where to fly back quickly. And then you have B5, which is the exact same waypoint as B1. So... That's where it should be. It should be five kilometers away from us. So we're gonna fly up there and we're gonna take a look. Set. But then first we're gonna take a look at the EP13 site, which now has contrast controls. Uh, we'll take a bit more. We we'll take a quick look here on the ground. So we have some Mavericks loaded. And then use the radar button to invert it. That's the first thing you can do. And that's extremely useful to just quickly find out, you know, you can more easily confirm what you're seeing. It's like, yeah, we're going to see that color there. 
Uh, we'll see that better when we're in the sky. We can also, using the contrast adjustments... By the way, this is the radar button, so it's the exact same buttons that you turn the radar into B-scope. That's the inverted. So, what's it called? The A2 button on the joystick there. So when you have the, either it in ANF mode, you always have the sight on, or you have a nav mode and you take the safety off. This thing will come on. And you can then invert it. You can also use the contrast adjustment to adjust the contrast and brightness. Now the problem is that if you adjust the brightness, then you might not be able to see anything on one or the other camera views. So we'll fly up, we'll fly up in the air and I'll see you in a moment. And I'll show you what the waypoints will look like. So here we are back again. There's the airport. And here is waypoint B5 and what would also be waypoint B1. So we'll take a look at where we are. So I'm guessing this is just a sort of unroute waypoint to the target area. So we then already switch it to waypoint B2. And we then turn on target. And like I said, the waypoint B4 and B2 is the exact same point. So if I place down there and if we change waypoints, you can see they are exact same distance, exact same direction, the marker doesn't move. And then we have the target waypoint, which is a little bit further out. So, I'll fly up a little bit higher so you can see if we can spot our targets. It looks like B2 is to the east, not the east, yeah, east, northeast of this hill. And the targets are on the other side of the Inguru River over there, and I can see them already. Visual on some pixels there. So we'll set waypoint B3, which. Is that correct? It's. A quick mess of that ship. Um, that does not look right. It looks like it's a bit off. And it, in the testing I've been doing, it usually is a little bit off. So I wouldn't recommend using this for precision guided weapons like BK-90. Because as you can see, that circle is where we should be hitting. That's the area where it thinks the target is. So we're gonna do this. We're gonna turn attitude. And then we're gonna turn on... Active pause. Sound. Now, active pause basically means that we are in hover mode. This is a sheet, <laughs> so this does not work online. But it's just to demonstrate the different contrast options that we have for the vacuum. And as you can see, if we look really close, you can see there are some dots down there. A little bit easier to make out, especially. But if we then adjust the contrast, we can then see these much better. I'm going to turn the contrast all the way. And then we can change the brightness. And there you go. It's almost like we have thermal camera. Of course, if we turn it even... Turn the brightness up even further, then eventually we won't see anything. We can then turn the brightness down, and we'll put it back to maybe not that much. And this is what happens if you turn it down, contrast all the way. As you can see, we can see the targets, to contrast and brightness down. And then you kind of do the opposite, because you can see, you can see anything. So if we turn the contrast all the way up again. You can then see them. So it depends on, but you can't see anything with that. And I think there's about 15 snaps on the uh, contrast adjustment and all that. So if we go all the way, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Yeah, so it's about 17 steps or something like that. Uh, so if you need to get it back to default, just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
There we go. You're now roughly in the middle. So yeah, this really helps. Something I've been wanting for a long time. Because the, the Maverick camera, it's... Uh, can be a bit difficult to see targets in certain situations recently. It seems like they change the way it works every now and then. But yeah, thanks for watching. And I hope this was very useful. So, Badjo out. <laughs>